and passionate about dogs, just not crazy about bitches. <laughs> David before. <laughs> Come on out here, David. Let's see ya. Welcome, RuPaul. So I'm so happy you all are here. Now we are in the middle of a three week summer test run. So if you're watching at home, at the gym, or if you're just strutting down the street, thank you. And if you like what you see, please tell your friends, tweet about it at RuPaul Show. Now, speaking of strutting down the street, I saw y'all walking this runway earlier and you look so good. <laughs> You know, I, 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 I think we got some real serious fashion models up in here. Gigi Hadid, you better watch your back, girl. And there is one guy we've invited here today who told us he's looking for a change. Where is David? Woo! David, come on over here. Come on, David. Yeah, just over here. Watch your step now, come on. Hi, David, here, sit down. Okay, now David, you're looking for a change. You're beautiful. Thank you. Oh, God, look at all this gorgeous. Is this your real hair? This is real. Really? It's oh, really yeah. nice. And you, you've got hair all over the place, don't you? Rude. Well, no, you've got the beard, <laughs> yeah. you've got the, the long. How long have you been growing your hair out? Uh, for about six years. Six went years. From like, like afro and then like hit critical mass and just kind of fell in on itself and I just kind of let it I, I, keep going. I started with an afro too, <laughs> believe it or not. It's a good look. Yeah, well, you know, actually I won best afro in the ninth grade. Oh. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> Those were the days. But it, it looks great, you look fabulous. Thank you. Um, why do you want to change? Um, I've had it for a, a long time and I don't think that it's me. But I've had it for so long and I think that it kind of gets in my way mm. a little bit. It gets in the way of my confidence. I think it's something that I'm kind of using as a prop or a, like, a little bit of a mask. Oh, you know? that's not good. Yeah. Uh, and you want more out of life. Yes, and I think that uh, I'm, I'm gonna turn 30 next month. A child. <laughs> a child. You know, life begins at 40, actually. So you oh got 10 God. more years. Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. It does. All right, so I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. You're in the right place because I've got my glam group back there mm -hmm. who are just happy to run their fingers through your hair <laughs> and change. Look, you're beautiful. Those beautiful smile, great yeah. skin, and a great disposition. I think you're a winner. I think you're a winner, baby. So, are you scared? Uh yeah, I haven't seen what's under here in a very long time. Oh, dear. I don't know what my chin looks like anymore. Oh, my God. We might find Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're going to walk down that runway and, and open the door to the rest of your life. Are right. you ready? I'm ready. All right, go on back there. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. Can't wait. Fantastic. You want to go on back there, right. doll. Thank you. Okay. Now, she's the queen of the Housewives franchise, but not everyone these days agrees she deserves the crown. But she rules her empire of television spin-offs, restaurants, clubs, and pups. Please welcome Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Lisa Vanderpump. A little bit of Oh my dear, look at you. We've got tea. 
Absolutely. You're not doing this every day? No, well, you know, we should do it you every day. Do it. So Everybody should do it every day. Lovely. Now, we've taken, uh, we've, we've already poured the tea, but that's not done. You, sh you should wait for the person to pour it for you. Is that correct? You can do whatever you want. When you look as fabulous as this, <laughs> whatever you do, I'm okay with. I have to tell you that this is Puffy. Puffy. And Puffy does have terrible gas. So before you blame it on me. Yes. Exactly. If anything happens over here, you know that's not me. Or it could be Ross. Yeah. Well, yeah, at least <laughs> I, I lost my sense of smell at a disco sometime in the 80s. Oh, right. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, it's all good for me. Oh, the 80s. So, now... Um, I lost a lot of things in the 80s. Oh, Let's did be you? clear about that. A lot of things that uh, we needn't even uh, uh, try to find again. Well, I have a, a child to prove of one thing that I kind of lost in the 80s. <laughs> I think it was in Ibiza. Oh, yes. 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 So how are you going? Good. Yeah? Yeah. You look fabulous. Thank you. Right back at you. Yeah. Now, uh, Puffy there, is, that, is Puffy a, a, a boy or a girl? Well, Puffy's a metrosexual boy. I mean, he's, um, he's a, a boy that's very comfortable in his own skin. I love he that. He wears clothes, and he always wears pink because I love pink, but he wears clothes because he's got chronic alopecia. Oh, dear. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. I know you love dogs. Worship them. Yeah. Now, now, before we go into your worship of dogs, let's talk about some other bitches. Oh, okay. I, how did I know you were going? Do you remember that tagline? I'm passionate about dogs, just not crazy about bitches. <laughs> oh, my God. When I said that, Bravo said, no, no, you can't say that. But now I think they'll probably say you're allowed to say I, that. I think so. You know, you know I, I don't want to ask about the typical things about who said what or anything like that. I just, you know, I grew up in a house with... They said all of it. I said nothing. Yes. <laughs> I grew up in a house with all women. I'm, I've lived my life around women. And there is an inherent um, undercurrent of, of viciousness that uh, some women have. Now, on the surface, it's, hey, girl, ooh, you look so good. Let's have lunch. Ooh, I love your nails. But there's an undercurrent of, of divisiveness. Where does that come from, in your opinion? I, I absolutely detest it. I think you should just focus on yourself and being the best that you can be. Yeah. You know, I don't... Yeah. It, I, I never, ever think like that. Of course, the show is based on fun and a, a few snarky things, but when it gets really vicious and trying to kind of pull each other down, I just don't support that at all. Yeah. I think, you know, in this day and age, with the whole kind of bullying and the Me Too movement, I think we're moving towards a kinder environment. I hope so, you yeah. know? Well, what does it take? I mean, when did you realise that uh, it was important for you to, A, stay out of it, but how do you resist it? Oh, it's not difficult for me to resist it. I'm not going to roll down in the dirt with that. I'm just not going to do it. That's not the way I live my life. It's not the way I've raised my children. And it's not something that, you know, it's not an example I want to, want to set. Never. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you, you recognize it's there. But it's not just there with housewives. It's there with... It's there all over the world, let's be honest. And in the Me Too movement and, and what, what the changes that are happening... How can we change it? How do we change it? How would we change it in our daughters and where does it come from? Well, I think the first step is basically giving people the confidence to actually, you know, speak up and know that they can say, hey, that's not OK. Yeah. I think that's, the, you know, the first most important thing. But you know what? I don't want to take away the fun in life as well. I was brought right. up in Europe where, you know, everything was a little flirty. I mean, in France, it was just like, you know, yeah. it was just, well, like, you know, it was pretty <laughs> yeah. risque. Well, well, that's a good point because, you know, a lot of times people say a lot of things, but if you can judge the intent behind what a person person says, then you're, you're out of the woods. Yeah, or if they're holding something over you, like, you know, your job, for example. Right. But I'm talking about playful flirting. Please don't stop that. Yeah. And I think when we talk about the 80s, I think life was much simpler then. Yeah. But I do think it is a time for us to progress, and I think there's a few people that have been held up for an example, a very poor example, mm -hmm. and they should be punished for it. They really yeah. should. So, yeah, moving yeah. forward. Yeah. And you employ a lot of people. Do you have um, uh, sexual... Um, uh, conduct meetings before you h hire someone? Because, you know, actually... Um... Have you seen my show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, of course you have, you know, the sexual harassment <laughs> handbooks, everything which you say, you know, this is the way you should behave, read this, yeah. and, you know, then they go off and do their own thing. 
I think, you know, when you see uh, people kind of really intimidating others, and, you know, I've worked closely with the Trevor Project, yes. and you see youngsters, especially LGBTQ, three or four more times, likely to commit suicide, I think it's very important that we stand up and also with our children, yeah. you know, because... You've got two kids. Yes, yes, I have. And Do you I've like seen... them? Do you like your kids? <laughs> you know what? I got shingles when Max left home. Really? I really did. I mean, because Pandora had left, you know. But now I think I would have shingles if he came back. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Yes, I do come for dinner and I wish you're gone. Yeah. Um, I'm very close to both of them. Max has told his story of being adopted on, on television, um, you know, on Housewives mm -hmm. and his journey. And I'm just very fortunate to have a great relationship with them. And yeah. I value that tremendously, um, especially the mother-daughter relationship. Yeah, that's a tricky one. It, and for some reason... I think it's 50-50. I really lucked out with her. She's got to be one of the smartest people mm. I know, and I'm very, very proud of her. And with Max, he kind of works differently. He's very creative. He's very tactile. He's very loving. Mm. So they don't all have to be the same, yeah. you know, but just love them unequivocally. And, you know, I work with a lot of kids that have come to us and they've, you know, struggled or maybe been thrown out the house because of their sexual orientation. And my message to parents is... Love your children unequivocally. There's nothing you can do that's going to change that. Yeah. So you're going to lose them. Yeah, you know? it's true. Yeah. And, so, and I love you and everything that you. you stand up for. It's so important. People like you, you lead the way. You're a trailblazer. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Well, you know, family life is, is so important. What, what was your upbringing like? I know you're from England, obviously. But yes. What, was it uh, uh, well, like the traditional... I think Family. so. I went to, you know, a lovely school and I have my only sibling, my brother, who unfortunately died just within the last year, a year no. ago this week, actually, to uh, suicide. So it was very, very difficult for me to deal with that, being my only sibling, because, you know, it was something that you're unprepared for, even though I'd worked closely with the suicide prevention. So it was just... Did you know it was coming? Did you have any clue that it was coming? I knew that he was troubled, but it was just very, very difficult to deal with. And I think suicide radiates so many emotions and what it leaves behind. And again, one of the missions or people I've been working with, it's about please understand to everybody out there that this is a permanent solution to yeah. hopefully what could be a temporary problem. And sometimes people are so, you know, embedded in that kind of murky quagmire that is life. And we all go through this. You know, we all go through stuff Absolutely. where we think we can't cope. And I'm sure many of us sitting here today think that. But you can, if you just reach out, you know, then you can hopefully come through it. But for him, he, it, it was just a tragedy. And it was very, very difficult for us all to accept it. What could you have said to him? Do you, do you is there anything? Oh, God, you're going to make me cry. This is gonna, not going to be... Um, I, I think we all have regret that that person, also with the time difference, being eight hours ahead and it He's was at England. night. Yeah, I think, you know, I think just to connect with somebody... I think when people, you know, he, I think it was a cry for help that went wrong because he took pills and he had a back surgery. He didn't have a drug problem, but it just went horribly wrong and it was very, very difficult. But I'm also all about talking about what's happening in your life because when you reach out to people, when you share your stories, people will benefit from your experience Absolutely. and you can say how you work through it or maybe how you could prevent something in the future. So, yeah. yeah, reaching out and being the best you can be and the best, you know, support to those around you. Absolutely. And, and, and there's no shame in feeling the human feelings and reaching out to people and letting people know that, what's going on you with know you. What, what you're saying is I'm very English. I was brought up but no therapy, no, you know, kind of pull yourself together, stiff upper lip, that yes. kind Must of mentality. Grumble? Yes. Yeah, you know. And I was very open saying that after this happened, 
I took antidepressants and I've very rarely taken a pill in my life. But I thought, you know what, I need some help with this. And I went to grief counselling just a few times just to try and have a better understanding. Absolutely. So to people, you know, if you're going through something, it's OK. Yes. We're all going to go through something. You don't fall out of somebody's vagina, land on the floor, yeah. then end up in a box 90 years later without that's right. something that's right. in your life that's going to be challenging. So as soon as we compute that... You know, my kids are going to be so proud of me for saying that. Yes, and, and so... <laughs> Falling so... out of somebody's vagina. <laughs> Actually, she my... didn't fall out. She was pulled out. <laughs> it sounded like I just coughed and she dropped on the floor. No, that's very not English way. of you. I know. Yes. Uh, people might be surprised to know that you say you lacked confidence growing up. Now, I want to hear how you turned it around, and we'll talk about that what, when we became come back. obnoxious? Yes, exactly. <laughs> More in a minute. <laughs> I would have shagged Brad Pitt when I met him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a chihuahua mix. He's about five years old. If you or someone you know is struggling with suicidal thoughts, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Now, we were talking to you about confidence and the lack of confidence growing up. And it's such an important topic because, you know, we're having big conversations with young people about the instruction book. How did you get, how did you find the instruction book to life? Wow, gosh, I don't know that I have that yet. I might sign up for that. Well, Do you have booze it? Booze helps. <laughs> oh, well, that too, yes. <laughs> um, you know what, the instruction book to life. I think the shame, I, I talk a lot publicly and try to inspire young women. I think the shame of it is, is the youth is wasted on the young. Yeah. You know, there's an old expression, but I sometimes think that, you know, your confidence comes with experience. Yeah. And I remember, I remember every year when it was my birthday party, I'd think, oh, I'd hate the cake coming and I'd hate having to stand up and make a speech. I so didn't want it to be about me. Now I'm loving it. I'm yes. like, bring that cake yes. out. Let yes. me talk until I put you to yeah. sleep, yeah. right? When did, you, when, did you, when did that happen? I think that if you can push yourself in little increments and always challenge the things that scare you. And, you know, like when I've done public speaking and I've spoken to people and said, who's really terrified to absolutely speak up publicly? And you'll see somebody like that. By the time you get them up and you sit them next to you, and you have a conversation with them. You say, look, you have just spoken yeah. in front of hundreds or thousands of people. How do you feel? And I think that's what life is. It's like, take that little step. You don't have to dive in the deep end. Take that little step. That will bolster your confidence and build it from there. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, speaking of youth... Yeah. Being wasted. I know that uh, one of my favorite You're groups... You're not going to bring up my youth, Well, are you? <laughs> one of my favorite groups ever of all time is the group ABC. Oh, Lordy. And you're in yeah, the you video. You... Well, I've, I've, I know the video very well. You are a, a, a video ho. Oh, yeah, well, that, that's one of the nicest things that anybody's ever said to me. I take that as a compliment, by the way. <laughs> now, do you look back on that and think, oh, geez, why did I do that? No, I love that. I, I very rarely regret things that I've done because I always think you can learn from things and I love the fact that I mean it was made when there were very few videos around yes, really yes. so it's kind of a bit of a an iconic video it so is. To speak. but it's also I remember when I made that it was the week I just met my husband Ken and so that's very synonymous with how I was feeling at the time mm. I mean I met Ken I was engaged like six weeks later, I'm married within three months. Really? So basically, I did that video and I was taken off the market. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that was 36 years ago. That, Wait, that you, video was made 36 years ago. I and, met Ken through my brother. And you were modeling and doing things around London because it was the Poison Arrow video for the group ABC. Right, yes. And you were modeling. What were well, you I doing then? I wasn't really modeling. I mean, I'm 5'5", five five, so I was like knee-high to a grasshopper. They're all like six foot tall, you mm. know. Um, I was doing a lot of commercials. Mm -hmm. And um, I was pretty successful at doing that. And I had a lot of independence as a, a young woman. I left home at 18 and bought my own place. I'd work two jobs. I'm all about hard work. My kids, I made them start the restaurants washing dishes. If you spoil your kids, one thing will happen to them is they'll end up spoiled. Yeah. So 
I, uh, where in London are you from? I'm from South London, uh, yeah, Dulwich. But then I, I met Ken at 21 and then lived in, in Kensington. And oh, because Ken had money. Not that much. I mean, he was 36. <laughs> he, yeah. No, I mean, he, we bought our first place together. Yeah. He'd bought a house prior to that, but for his parents, he was very kind of supportive of his family. And then we bought our first place together. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and that was it. Then we had Pandora five years later. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, when you look back on your life and you think about the choices that you make, yes. it's interesting. Uh, would you do anything differently? I would have shagged Brad Pitt when I met him. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no, right? I think, honestly, when I think about the, the only regrets, I, I wish I had been more of a whore. Yes, in I my know, right? Yeah. I, didn't, I married at 21. I didn't yeah. really get the chance to yeah. do that wild 80s stuff. I mean, come Let's on. Let's go do it together. You, well, you know, I mean, there's penicillin. I know, right? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, for the advice for young people, so, okay, so abroad, we've been talking a lot about yes. just life experiences. A broad bit of advice for all young people out there listening is live your life. Don't be afraid of emotions. Yes. Don't be afraid to tell people what you're feeling. Right. Hard work. Right. Don't, yeah, don't be insecure about that, that feeling of, of, of like insecurity don't you know people because everybody feels everybody that. feels that everyone's you know, is pretending it. everyone is, it. is covering exactly. it up so everybody has that going on and yes. i think yeah and i think if people knew that they would actually get through this thing a lot easier is the wrong word with a lot more uh navigational skills yeah just you know? because you look at some of these people that you think have it all and have it going on, they really have their own insecurities and realize that, you know, every photograph is photoshopped, every photograph. Yeah. So don't put that pressure on yourself. And you know what? I love that when I saw everybody coming out Isn't here. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the fact that everybody brought something yes. different. I love you know? that. It's just a sort of a, an, an analogy for yes. life of walking your yeah, walk. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we're going to go to break. We're going to have more Lisa Vanderpump in a minute and we've got dogs coming up. We've oh, got right. a dog yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of stuff. So... Uh, We'll be right back after this. Yes, yes. All right, now, uh, Lisa, everyone yes. wants to know if you're coming back to the Housewives of Beverly Hills. I... It was such a, a brutal season for me, and it was at a time where I was floundering. And everybody always says, oh, you look like you've got your life together. And, but I started that show this season like two or three months after my brother passed, and I just wasn't in the right space. And I actually did say, and we've talked about it with Andy on Watch What Happens Live, he says, I wish I'd given you the year off. I just wasn't as prepared, and mm. I was just... I found that I couldn't deal with something that I could normally deal with. Yeah. And so then it just went on, and then it was accumulative, and in the end I just said, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I just can't. But it's been nine years, nine and years. it's been, you know, an incredible experience, and it's given me so much, so many wonderful opportunities, and and, you know, speaking to the point of being able to start my own 501c3, the Van Pump Dog Rescue. That's right. Yeah, I mean, now, things like that. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, well, we still didn't get an answer, so I'm, I'm assuming we... Because you're not going to get Not going to get an answer. answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sharing that shit. Yeah. Now, we know that you love dogs, and you yeah, have this organization. Worship. Yes. It's, it's like a rescue, but yes. it's, a, it's a kennel. D explain it to me. Well, we try to reinvent the wheel. I think a lot of people feel when they go into rescue situations that it's going to be sad or they don't know what they're going to see and they can't take one because they want to take them all. And I understand yeah. that because that's how I felt. But we created the Vanderpump Dog Rescue into this fabulous boutique. I mean, literally go in there and there's chandeliers and velvet sofas and Ooh. music playing. And you're thinking, oh, I could spend time in here. That's the whole point. All the dogs are in little living rooms. They're all either owner surrender, abuse, pull from the euthanasia facilities. You know, they've all literally been that far away. We have terrible stories as well of mm. dogs that have been hit. You know, we've got two now that have been hit and are on the side of the road, and we have to kind of rehabilitate them, a lot of surgeries. How many are in, in the facility now? Oh, gosh, I'll have to ask John that, but mm. we just this week rescued out over a 1,000. Oh, so. my goodness. 
Oh but my goodness. When, when I say a thousand, when you meet these people that are going to be coming out with some of our rescues, it's not just finding their loving forever homes, it's doing the home checks, it's rehabilitating. You know, some of these little, little guys have really been abused or they've been neglected. And it's, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into that as well. But the whole point of the rescue was for people to come in to interact with them, for them not to be in cages. Yeah. And then we had a wonderful uh, friend of, of the foundation that then financed this rooftop deck on the top. So they've got an agility park oh, upstairs as well. I love that. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Now, to talk dogs, I also invited another one of my dog-loving friends to add to our tea party. Welcome two-time U.S. Olympian and silver medalist in freestyle skiing, Gus Kenworthy. A little bit of love. Gorgeous. Now, who's this Gus? Is he from, uh, from Korea or from Yulin? Um, she's from Korea. She yeah. was on a dog meat farm in South Korea. Oh, thank you. We... Bless what? you. Bless you. Yeah, we brought her back uh, during the 2018 Olympics. Oh, my God. She's beautiful. Look at this coloring. Oh, Hi. Thank you. How are you she's doing? Very, she's a monochromatic queen. She's a monochromatic queen. <laughs> have, you al have you always loved dogs? Um, I have, absolutely. My... Uh, family had actually cats growing up because my mom lived in housing that couldn't have dogs. Yeah. Um, but I got my first dog when I was 11. My dad took me to a shelter and I got to pick one out. And um, my first boyfriend and I rescued um, five dogs from the Olympics in Russia. They were living on the street. Oh. And, um, yeah, thanks. And, really? Yeah. And uh, the Humane Society International played a big role in that. And then coming into the 2018 games, they were like, there's a huge dog meat trade. Um, it's a really big issue that's going on in South Korea and in a lot of Asian countries. And we're doing a PSA about it because these farms are just a few miles from where you're going to be competing in the Olympics. Would you lend your voice? And so I've said, oh, that's of course so that sweet. I would. And how do they let you take a dog out of the country and back into this country? Uh, I mean, there's kind of a, a lot of red tape. Yeah. Um, there's oh. quarantine processes and whatnot, but the Humane Society International really dealt with a lot of that. Had you two met one another before? No. No, well, but I we mean, tried I'm a huge to, fan. didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we tried because, to organize a lunch. Yeah, we've set up um, a sanctuary now in China where we've got over 400 I know, dogs. It's yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, You're we'll, an icon. We, well, we're going to connect you, and we're going to do a lot more here, too. Now, um, we're going to go to break real quick, but um, when we come back, uh, we're going to have something really special. Are you going you think you're going to do a third Olympics? I do, yeah. I'm hoping to. Oh, Ooh, my goodness. Great. Good for you. Yeah. We'll be right back after this with my lovely guests. Mickey was found in a dumpster. Yeah. But look at Mickey now. said earlier, Vanderpump dogs have found forever homes for over 1,000 dogs. Now, we know the work to save these animals never ends. So we told Lisa to bring some of Vanderpups on over here to strut their stuff down the runway and hopefully right into the hearts of our viewers out there. Now, all these dogs are available for rescue. Ross is going to tell us about these strays who are going to slay the runway. Take it away, Ross. Okay. <laughs> Rue, can we have dogs every day? I love this. All right. <laughs> and a reminder, like Rue said, all of these dogs are up for adoption. Are you all ready for a doggy fashion show? Yeah. Okay. Let's meet our first dog. Say hi to Pebbles. Oh. Your heart will go bam, bam when you meet Pebbles. We think Pebbles is about 8 to 10 years old, but, you know, a lady never reveals her age. <laughs> She's a dachshund mix who was rescued from a high-kill shelter with her sister Socks, but Socks has already been adopted. Life can be rough, right? <laughs> Pebbles needs a forever home right oh, now. Thank you, Pebbles. <laughs> 
Michelle, you like pebbles? You like what she's wearing? Pebbles! All of these, all of the clothes is from Vanderpups, too. All right, up next, say hi to Grandma Lucy. She's 12 years old. She's a Bichon mix. She a fancy lady, Rue. Oh, she is. She lived with her human for over a decade, but when her human passed away, she was sent to a high kill shelter. She's got a lot of life and a lot of love left to give. <laughs> Grandma Lucy. Oh. Up next, let's meet Patches. Come on out, Patches. <laughs> Hi, Patches. Oh, wow. This perfectly poppet pooch is a five-year-old Shih Tzu mix who is saved from a high kill shelter. Uh, She's from the south side of LA, Rue. Right. The south side. <laughs> her hobbies include eating wet food, snuggling, and sniffing her friends' butts. Oh. <laughs> Up next. Okay, you're gonna fall in love fast when you meet Bolt. Come on out, Bolt. I love Bolt. Look at this boy. He's a Chihuahua mix. He's about five years old. He got a giddy up in his step. Oh. <laughs> we got a love connection. We do. Let's hear it for Bolt. All right, get ready for this. Wait until you meet Mickey. Mickey, come on out here. Mickey. Mickey is an eight, eight week old pit bull puppy. Gorgeous. In a dumpster. Oh if you can believe goodness. this, Mickey was found in a dumpster. Yeah. But look at Mickey now. Yeah. <laughs> let's hear it for Mickey and let's bring out all Canine contestants, one last time. Big round of applause. We'll bring them out. Yes. Gorgeous. Oh wow, here, let's stand up. Let's get him up. Maybe we can get the doctor to come out too. Yeah, Dr. John Sessa, who's my executive director of the Van and Pump Dog Foundation, where are you? Come on out. <laughs> come on out, Dr. John. Yeah, lovely. All right, now it's time to pick our stray of the day, okay? What are you guys thinking? All of them. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I know, I know the, the urge. The, Grandma Lucy. Well, this is the thing. I know the urge is to pick the youngest, but I think Grandma Lucy is our stray of the day. Grandma Lucy, take a bow, Grandma Lucy. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you guys all for such wonderful work. And if you want to find out how you can adopt any of these cute pups, go to RuPaulShow.com for all the information. Let's give a hand one more time to all of our strays. All right. We'll be right back after this. We'll reveal that makeover, too. All right. Now, earlier today, we met David in our audience who wanted to change his look. Now, Alex here is one of his very best friends. And are you excited to see the new David? I am very, very excited. I'm excited, too. All right, so let's take a look at David before. Oh, look, there he is. Oh, Millie Vanilli in the house. A lot of volume. <laughs> All right, come on out here, David. Let's see ya. Let's face that camera. Look at you. Oh my goodness. You look like a movie star. I feel like I could model now. Yes, you are modeling. 
Now, okay. Now, um, now, David, how do you feel, most importantly? About 100 pounds lighter. Uh-huh. Uh, I feel like this is the best I've ever looked. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, you looked pretty good before. Thank you. You know, well, let's sit down. Here, sit down. Let's talk to you. All right. Come and sit over here, baby. You're a beautiful man. Do you, you, you know that, right? Uh, now I feel it. Well, yeah. because, you know, uh, I'm surprised, though, because um, speaking of surprises, sure. we have a little surprise for you. We have your mom on Skype right now. What? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, there she is. Hi, Mama. <laughs> Hi, Sue. <laughs> Hi. How are you going, Sue? I, I, I'm okay. How are you? Uh, we're good. Now, I know that you're watching in Minneapolis on Fox 9 Plus, and we are just happy to have you. Can you see your son? Um, I think that's him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's a beautiful boy. I will quote Grandma Horn. He's so handsome, he's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> really? Now, I know that, uh, uh, I know that, when was the last time you saw him look like this, Sue? Oh, my, let's see, where did he go? Um, <laughs> it would have probably been in college. Really? Had you ever tried to get him to cut his hair? <laughs> no, not really. Um, his dad and I have discussed it in private that we would oh. really like him to get his hair. Uh huh. Yeah. What's, I don't doubt that. What's dad's name? Sean. Sean. And so he gets the curly hair from you. Uh huh. It's <laughs> gorgeous. Well, thank you so much for surprising your gorgeous son here. We're going to get him booked on an acting job. <laughs> oh, yay! <laughs> that would be nice. Thanks, Sue. Love you, Mom! You know, it's interesting, you know, uh, David, it's just very interesting how in our lifetimes, we were talking about this with Lisa, how you, you sort of transform in the course of a lifetime, you find yourself. Yeah. Do, do you feel like you're easing up on the idea of just finding your right rhythm? Yeah, I think I'm leaning into the idea that Whatever is happening right now is going to get me to wherever I'm going to be. That's right. You know, you know what? You get there. I'm going uh, I'm going to terribly quote Eckhart Tolle. You get there by realizing you are already there. Oh, Can yeah. let the church say amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And baby, the fact that you're here, the fact that your mom is there uh, talking now, this is a pivotal moment in your life. I hope you realize that. Yeah, I feel it. What, do, do you ever wear suits? Do you own a suit? <laughs> no, this is easily the nicest thing I own. <laughs> Clothes or otherwise. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I was jeans, t-shirt, flannel. Yeah, I, I kept it easy. I tell people all the time, you want to make more money? Wear a suit. I feel powerful. Absolutely. Now, David, uh, you are our sleigh of the day, so <laughs> let's see you take it to the runway. Let's go over and help him out. Come on. Come on. Are you ready for this? I'm, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. you go over there. Alex, we'll, we'll watch over here. Are you, are you all ready? Here, let's move over here a little bit more. Okay, David, get it. Let's go on over. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, thank you. Great now. How beautiful is this man? We'll be right back after this. How gorgeous. Let's walk the runway together. Come on. David's slay of the day, and I know not everyone can be here in L.A., but you can still slay the runway no matter where you are. Send us your videos using the hashtag, hashtag slay of the day, tag RuPaul show, and you might get a shout out. You might just get a shout out. <laughs> now, today's home slay comes to us from the Bronx or the Brizonx. Yeah. <laughs> the Brizonx. The Boogie Down. Brizon Brizonx or Boogie Down. Brizon, whichever. Yeah. whichever. Yeah. My choice. Both. Okay. What do you All choose right. today? I'm going with Brizon. All right. Okay. Uh, right in New York, Romello just got his degree in theater arts and slayed his college graduation. Look at Romello. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, first of all, gorgeous. 
Come on, college degree. <laughs> Work it, grad. How fabulous is that? You know, Lisa and I, we were talking about the concept of, of navigating your own life and making it work from the inside out. And you better tell somebody. When did you feel the first time you, you slayed it? Uh, uh, Gus, how old were you when you felt like you slayed it? Uh, probably when you're going down the slopes at 100 miles yeah. an hour. <laughs> I mean, probably like the 2014 Olympics, I feel like. That was like wow, my like yeah. pinnacle slate at moment. Landed my run, got a medal. Was that, how wow. old were you around that time? 22. 22. Uh, Ross, when did you feel like you slayed it? Seventh grade, I was Bilbo Baggins in The Hobbit, and they're still talking about <laughs> it. <laughs> no, to this day. Michelle, when did you slay it? Well, I came out the womb slaying. Okay. <laughs> but for me, it was raising my daughters to a point where they are self-sufficient on their own, driving and getting to where they're going every day. I love it. Safely. Yes. And at least I don't have to ask you. It was the Poison Arrow video from <laughs> ABC. So, uh, I think giving birth. I'm thinking creating a perfect creature. I think that's slaying it. Yeah. With uh, my eyelashes on. Well, Come on. I just feel like I just, today was my first day to slay it. So yeah, uh, right. we're going to be right back after this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank all my guests today. Now, listen, if you liked our show, tweet about it, text it to your friends, tell your old grandmother about it, <laughs> and we'll be right back here next time. Thanks for the support, and we hope this is just the beginning of a long, happy, healthy relationship. Bye! Bye.